Happy Friday, Chiefs Kingdom. I am Harrison Graham. Welcome into the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. We've got some winners and losers from week two of Chiefs OTAs as three more voluntary practices are in the books. Let's go ahead and get to it. Our first guy here, Luis Reese Zamit, the running back, do-it-all athlete, the former rugby player who's coming over trying to make an NFL roster. He's in the winners category, and um, I think it's because – versatility is key, especially when you're someone who's never played American football before, and he's proven to be more valuable. Dave Tubb, the special teams coordinator, uh, named him as a potential kickoff candidate as the Chiefs are looking at ways to reduce Harrison Butker's kickoffs because with this new kickoff rule, uh, kickers are going to be more susceptible to having to make tackles, and you don't want Butker getting hurt because obviously his primary value is to make big field goals, not as a kickoff specialist. And look, make yourself versatile, right? It's like anything in life. When I first got my job at Chat Sports, uh, I could produce, I could be on air, I could do things behind the scenes. If you make yourself more val valuable, more versatile, more usable, uh, less likely you're going to lose your job or uh, stay uh, at the bottom of a company, more likely you're going to move up and uh, get to where you want to go. And if this guy is going to make this 53-man roster, the more he can do, the better chance he has. So uh, I think uh, that is certainly uh, playing out here, and we'll uh, we'll see how things shake out, especially once the pads go on. I think that'll be the kind of the tell-all factor is if you know he can get lit up by someone in training camp or in a preseason game and get back up. If you're pulling for Luis Reese Zami, like this video. I'm pulling for him. It's a fun story. A uh, good athlete. I'll uh, be curious to see how this plays out. Uh, I think at minimum, they'd want to keep him on the practice squad if he doesn't make the team and uh, try and further develop him there. But uh, I'm pulling for him. You should be too. Hit that like button. Next up is Sky Moore. He's in the loser category. And, you know, I'm no over-the-top draft expert. I like to think I have a pretty good feel for a lot of the prospects, uh, but uh, Sky Moore is a big whiff of mine. I, I thought this was going to play out a lot better, and uh, there's certainly still time to see if he can show you something, but I thought when he got drafted, A, I loved him coming out of Western Michigan. B, I thought him on this team would be a great fit, but the guy's been a flat-out disappointment. I mean, he just has. I mean, you look at his uh, career stats, and then we'll get to the OTA note uh, of why he's in the loser category. I mean, in 30 games, he doesn't even have 500 yards receiving. I mean, you're talking about, what, less than 15 yards per game in his NFL career? Or, or like, less than 20 yards per game? I mean, it's just – it has not gone well. Uh, one career touchdown. Did score a touchdown in the Super Bowl two years ago, so he'll always have that. But uh, clock is certainly ticking here. Uh, Harold Kuntz, who covers the Chiefs, had a couple of notes in here, but the one to focus on is uh, – couple deep throws to Sky Moore. It didn't connect. Now, sure, maybe the throw was off target. Uh, who knows uh, the further details. But I saw a couple of other tweets of Sky Moore not having a great practice. So, I don't know, man. You know, he just has not lived up to what I thought was a pretty good talent coming out of college. And I do think between him and Kadarius Tony, I think one of those guys at least is gone. I, I just do. I, I don't see an avenue where both those guys are here now. Rasheed Rice uh, facing a suspension, that might keep them both around initially because that will end up freeing up a roster spot to start the year. But uh, I just – I don't know, man. You trade up for Xavier Worthy, you sign Marquise Brown. The Chiefs are kind of telling you how they feel about Kadarius Toney and Sky Moore uh, at this point in time. And by the way, Kadarius Toney, uh, once again, absent at OTAs. Pick one to keep. If you want to keep Sky Moore, type SM. Kadarius Toney, type KT. I think Toney's more talented. I think Moore's a – harder worker, a better teammate. I think he, I think he, they like the character of him more, but I'd almost keep Kadarius Tony because I still think he's got more juice at this point. Uh, both these guys have been disappointing. There's no question. How about Nico Remigio, another wide receiver who was kind of an offseason warrior for this team last year. He was kind of tracking to potentially fight for a roster spot. Had a great training camp, did some good things in the preseason. Uh, he's having a good uh, OTAs period as well. This is a guy to watch, I think. Uh, again, he was great last offseason. Remember last offseason, there was like nine receivers that were in the mix to make the team, like with Justin Ross, Remigio. Uh, you had, uh, who's the guy that they um, that they ended up trading to Carolina? I can't remember his name now, but uh, 
they they had a lot of guys. Oh, Amir Smith Marset, who also formerly played for the Vikings and the Chicago Bears. Uh, he had a great uh, offseason last year. But uh, Nico Remigio, I think especially if guys like Tony and Moore continue to slide, you know, Justin Watson kind of is what he is at this point. Remigio is a return threat. I'm keeping an eye on him. I think he's got a shot uh, to do some things for this uh, Kansas City Chiefs football team. So uh, keep an eye on him. And when I look further at the wide receiver position, the reason I think a guy like Remigio has got a shot is – to me, you really only have three roster locks right now. Rasheed Rice, who's likely going to get suspended, Marquise Brown, and Xavier Worthy. I mean, that kind of um, frees up at least two spots, if not three, depending on how many the Chiefs carry. I mean, Justin Ross, Justin Watson, Nico Remigio, uh, Tony, Sky Moore, Montrell Washington, who had a pretty good week. So there's a lot of guys vying for roster spots, and I think Remigio's in the mix. And after these two or three roster locks, there's a lot of questions. Uh, after that at the wide receiver position, and uh, it's going to be fascinating to see which players emerge. Now, if you want to get yourself a Chiefs hat and T-shirt combo on sale right now, you can do so, chatsports.com slash KC combo. Go to that link, and you will find this item today. Link is in the comments and in the description, chatsports.com slash KC combo. Go ahead and get started right now. Isaiah Bugs, the defensive end, uh, he is also in the loser category for a couple of reasons. Get to the news side of it first. We briefly mentioned this the other day, but he's facing two misdemeanor warrants by Tuscaloosa police for uh, second-degree cruelty to dogs. Bugs is accused of leaving two dogs locked on his property with no access to food or water, according to the Tuscaloosa patch. Uh, now, he, through his lawyer, came out and denied all accusations, so... Like any other legal case, we'll see how this plays out, see where it goes. But, uh, again, just another, uh, I guess not arrest, but charge, allegation for a Chiefs player. It's kind of been a hectic offseason in Kansas City. Uh, that's not ideal, even you know if he ends up uh, not uh, getting charged. That's still a distraction. Uh, and, oh, by the way, he was not at OTAs on Thursday. Maybe he was there earlier in the week, who knows. But this is a guy who's probably on the roster bubble. I mean, you look at defensive end. Uh, right now, I mean, I don't even have him listed on the three deep at either spot. I mean, maybe he could push a guy like B.J. Thompson, who you took a flyer on last year. But uh, not ideal for Isaiah Bugs, who uh, certainly uh, is going to have to earn his way onto this roster. Kelvin Joseph, boss man fat, for those who don't know. That's his rapper uh uh, name. Uh, he was drafted by the Cowboys a couple of years ago. He's bounced around a little bit, but uh, uh, he had an interception in seven-on-seven seven drills. I saw a couple other positive tweets around him as well. Uh, so that uh, is a positive. You know, I mentioned it the other way, other day. You've kind of got your top three corners with McDuffie as your all-pro. We'll see if he uh, plays nickel or outside. The chatter is he's going to play more outside this year. Josh Williams and Jalen Watson as well, but. After that, I mean, it's open season. Nazi Johnson recovering from an ACL tear. Nick Jones, who they like, but uh, he's still uh, recovering, uh, or he's uh, still looking to crack uh, into the rotation. Echo Boydo, I mean, boss man fat, Kelvin Joseph, maybe he's got a shot. It's going to be an uphill battle. There's a lot of corners in that room, but again, CB4 and beyond is is up for grabs, and uh, he's got pedigree as a former second-round pick. So, uh, you know, this kind of reminds me of uh, when they – Picked up DeAndre Baker a few years ago, former first-round pick with the Giants, and actually played okay. Then he had a pretty serious injury, and that kind of ended his career. But, you know, maybe Joseph, it's all about situation. Maybe he gets in here. He's matured a little bit and uh, can show you something. We'll have to wait and see, but uh, certainly had a good week this week. Name a chief sleeper to make the roster. Kelvin Joseph would certainly be that. Who's an under-the-radar player that you would like to see make this football team or that could make this football team? Go ahead and drop his name down in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as we will continue to pump out content here on the Kansas City Chiefs Report. My name is Harrison Graham. Thanks to everybody for tuning in to today's show. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here. Enjoy your weekend. Tyler Jones will have a video up on the channel on Sunday, so be on the lookout for that. Peace.